Good. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Do it. Sounds good. I'm going to give it an even gas. So, uh, yeah, and, and <laughs> shove it in as big. By the guy that uh, was the producer for the trash out one day. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, on once the, we get her. Yeah, you have to get bring the, a towel. The bag. The, uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you all for coming today. I, I apologize that I have to do this with my laptop. I was going to run this off on the printer, and you know, printer bounced around in the back of the. RV coming up here and uh, it's giving me the same excuse that my students give me at school. My printer broke and I can't print out my assignment for today. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do it off of the computer so I apologize. Anyway, thank you for coming out to our dedication. My name is Dan Carrion. I am the Noble Grand Humbug of Grub Gulch 4149 from Madera, California. Uh, we are what's called an E. Clampus Vitus chapter. Um, I'll talk to you about that in a second. Uh, uh, so I am the humbug, which means I'm the president of the chapter. I'm also the rock stacker, uh, which is the guy that builds monuments. And so, you know, as humbug and rock stacker, I'm kind of the guy that gets yelled at for everything. So just so everybody knows that. Uh, Ecompass Vitus is all about preserving history and uh, educating people about our history by building monuments to people, places, and things. Uh, we have chapters throughout the western United States, and uh, our organization goes back to the 1850s, actually to 1850 in California, and it goes back to about 1842 in uh, West Virginia. That's where our chapter got started, our, our, uh, our organization rather, got started. Uh, you can find our historical monuments all over the West. Uh, we've got monuments in Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Nevada. Idaho, Montana, Utah, you know, all over the place. Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. Uh, I don't know, is there a chapter in Texas? I don't know if there is or not. No, I don't think not so. Not yet. I think there's one in New Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, all over the West. Uh, a lot of our history is, uh, is gold rush and mining history and stuff, but we'll take on just about anything. Um, in, our, in, our, uh, in our county, in Madera County, I believe our chapter has 62 monuments, uh, which is pretty cool I think I like that anyway in many ways train mountain here is uh, really similar to us it's about teaching people and educating people about history and about railroad operations and all of that and uh, so you know what it's kind of a natural thing that our groups kind of come together um, but how did it happen because this seems kind of a weird thing that a group from Madera California comes up here and and puts a monument in. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you our story. Last summer, um, my wife and I and some friends of ours came up, and uh, we visited Train Mountain for the day. I'd been wanting to come up here for years and years and years, and I always managed to come by on a Saturday, because that makes sense. It seems like it, Saturday is when people would be here. And actually, they're not open on Saturday. They're closed. They're open Monday through Friday. So I finally managed to set a day when we could come by on a Wednesday, and. They were open, so awesome. 
Um, so we, we got a train ride that day, and a fellow by the name of David was our engineer, and he was marvelous. He took us around, and, and he took us actually on an extended tour around the place, and God, he was so great to talk to, and um, you know, he, he, he listened to all my, my questions, and he actually acted like he enjoyed listening to my questions. Uh, so anyway, uh, at the end of our ride, we visited with several people who were sitting under the little gazebo over there, and uh, you know, had a nice talk and all of that stuff. And then we kind of walked over this way, and uh, you know, I I saw the flanger and the rotary snowplow and the Jordan spreader and the speeders, and well, I was enthralled, and I, I kept looking at all those, and you know, mostly the rotary, I was just dying. And of course, Anita got her fill of that stuff pretty quick. And so she walked over here to where you all are, about where you all are right now with another one of the ladies. And they were, I, it might have been shady at that time of the day, I can't quite remember, but they were kind of congregating over here. And, and finally about the point when, when I kind of had gotten my fill, and understand a lot of time went by, when I had kind of gotten my fill of the rotary, I came walking over here. And, uh, you know, I had my back to this. You know, I, when I saw the tank car at first, I thought, eh, tank car. I have one of those on my Lionel layout. I don't need to look at a tank car. I want to look at the rotary. Well, eventually I came over here and I was talking to them very much like I'm talking to you with my back to the tank car and didn't really pay any attention. And then it was time for us to kind of walk away and I, I turned around and I saw the tank car and I saw that it said Madera Wineries and Distilleries. And I'm not kidding, I just about fainted on that spot right over there because Madera Wineries and Distilleries is one of the oldest wineries and vineyards, actually it is the oldest vineyard, in Madera County and it's still active to the day. And I thought, oh my God, there's a, there's a Madera connection way up here? Well, it just hit me instantly. We, we've got to do a monument. That's all that there has to be because it doesn't say anything about what that is. It just says, there it is. Okay, and, and who the hell is K.R. Akalian? Well, we, we, we got to explain that. We got to educate people to come up here. So we went back down to the office and we talked to the folks who were there and I explained the whole thing about, gee, that's a place from Madeira and we need to do a monument and, and who do I talk to? And they said, well, you need to talk to Tom. And I said, okay, well, where do I find Tom? I'm thinking I'm going to have to email this man or call him or something. And this lady says, that's him sitting right over there in that chair. <laughs> and there was Tom, our Tom Watson right here. And Tom is sitting there minding his own business, you know, very peacefully, very calmly. And I walk up and I tell him this whole story. Are you in the picture, Tom? I want to make sure it's you. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I tell him the whole story and, and Tom very calmly says, well, put together a proposal and, and I'll put it in front of the board. And that was about all he said. And I'm, you know, I'm all bubbling and excited and going and Tom is very calm and laid back and I'm sure he's thinking, this guy's nuts. <laughs> he's crazy. Hopefully I'll never hear from him again. But Tom doesn't know me because, and now I've got to, I got to move forward in my little thing here. So I went back to the chapter and I explained everything and I told him they were, really supportive but they reminded me you're trespassing one of the brothers especially you're trespassing and we just don't do that kind of thing and he actually shook his finger at me we don't do that kind of thing dennis if you're watching this video you know that's you and so um he didn't know that already by the time that i had gotten back to the chapter i had already talked to daniel mancuso and charlie i think i had talked to you about it and they had already uh, given us permission to come down here and build a monument and to participate with us. So, uh, Umpqua Joe boys, this is the Umpqua Joe 1859 chapter from Cave Junction. Uh, they gave us permission to come down and, and uh, uh, trespass on their property. And, uh, and so we're good to go. Um, I'm waiting for Tom. I give him a, a proposal. And in a few months' time, we hear back that the board is happy with us to do a monument, and so we're basically good to go. Uh, all we needed was to build it. So, first thing I need to do is I need to thank some people. I need to thank Gateway Memorials in Merced, California. Gateway does our engraving on our granite. They've done 
Kurt, how many have they done of us? 20, maybe? They've done a lot, and they, they do them for really cheap. Uh, usually, uh, when you have these engraved, they charge you by the letter, and they just charge us 250 bucks for the whole thing, which is awesome. Uh, Cornerstone Granite in Raven, California, uh, basically went out of business a couple years ago, and so they sold us just a ton. I think it was 19 pieces of granite for 200 bucks. Jesus. So this piece of granite cost us, I think, 12 bucks. So they, they, that was awesome of them to do that. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, E. Clampus Vitus Umpqua Joe boys for coming up and for allowing us to trespass and for splitting the cost of the monument with us. Um, you know, the, the super cool people at Train Mountain also, uh, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but for them for allowing us to actually build this monument. Uh, and they allowed us to camp on site back here in the six acre campground and we've had a great time, I'm not kidding. Uh, they also let us use a cement mixer, I see it's gone, but Tom allowed for us to use their cement mixer, which really uh, helped us out a lot. I'm going to tell you, Tom, we swore at that cement mixer a lot, but, but we were grateful to have it here. Um, I'd like to thank the Upco Joe 1859 boys uh, and, and chapter uh, ex-Noble Grand Humbug Daniel Mancuso. Uh, Noble Grand Humbug Brian Norris, who's right here, uh, and Charlie Bow, who is next year's Noble Grand Humbug. Um, they're the ones that really communicated with me and, and made this all happy. And um, You know, really, without brothers working together, uh, nothing really happens. And, and really, this is one of the coolest things about Clampers, is that we can get together and do something as a group. Um, and, and my feeling is that if you're not preserving history and you're not building monuments, you're not clamping. That's, that's just the way I look at it. Um, I'd like to thank everybody here at Train Mountain. Uh, Tom Watson has been our liaison. He's been our contact person. He's been our site administrator. Um, and really, he's been our best friend the, the week that we've been here. Tom has bent over backwards to do stuff for us. Uh, he, he gave us rides on his own personal train. Um, we got other rides. We met all kinds of great people. And, and it was because of Tom. Thank you, Tom. Yep. I, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, David, our train engineer from, uh, from last year and from a couple of days ago, well, it was marvelous again this year. Again, he took us on an extended tour and we just had a great time talking and visiting. Uh, we've met a ton of great people, and I don't have last names, but I do have first names. Uh, Steve, Gil, who's standing right there. Um, Russ, who is, I think, out at the gate there. Uh, John is standing right there. Uh, Joe, who uh, was over the other day, and he shared us his, with his locomotive with us and showed us how it all worked and everything. Um, uh, John, who came up and, and explained to us how this sort of came to be and it's an amazing story uh, about how train mountain actually got started and and how it became as big as it is if you don't understand if you guys don't know this there's 43 miles of track here is that right 37. 20. okay 37 37 actually 37 20 miles of main line yeah awesome it goes up i don't know it goes up to portland i think i'm not sure <laughs> it's huge um anyway um Richard came around and helped us, uh, brought some stuff for us. Uh, Joyce opened the shop for us right there. Joyce opened the shop for us yesterday and allowed us to buy our, our train mountain pins and our, our trinkets and our hats and stuff. Um, Kevin, uh, Kevin's not here, I wish he was. Kevin uh, is the local Budweiser, the local Budweiser distributor. And he's got a train, he's got actually two containers over here with trains in it. And uh, his train has a bar car that you push a button and the top opens up and this bar comes out. And there's bottles of booze and glasses and a blender and all stuff. And then he's got another car behind that where you push the button and the top comes up and it's a TV and there's a concert, a KISS concert going on with a sound system. And he's got another car that's a, it looks like a propane tanker car, but actually you open it up and it's an ice chest. And uh, he's got a diner car. I mean, it's... Amazing, amazing. He was so nice to show us all that stuff. Uh, I didn't get everybody's names that we were, when we were here oh, and everybody so. yeah. that we met, but honestly, there's David right there. There he is. Uh, but honestly, we couldn't have been treated better. Uh, I'd like to thank every one of you guys that, that have hung around with us this week. 
I forgot to mention that Tom was nice enough to mention to us that a thing called Beer 30 happens over in the back shops. And that was really enjoyable. Gil was there with us for Beer 30, and, uh, and we had a nice time. The, uh, the uh, Budweiser uh, representative keeps a refrigerator in there stocked full of Budweiser products. So it was pretty cool. Not free. Um, anyway, not free. Uh, it's a dollar, <laughs> but what the hell. We built the components of this monument at my shop in Sanger. Uh, I'd like to thank ex Noble Grand Humbug JJ Skeen, ex Noble Grand Humbug Dennis Holschlag, ex PBC Francis Sullivan, who was just standing right here a second ago. There he is over there. Um, uh, Pete Gutierrez. Um, uh, they all helped create the pieces of the monument that we loaded up in, in our trucks and, and brought up here. Uh, here at Train Mountain, ex-Noble Grand Humbug Kurt Bridwell, right there. Daniel Carrion, right there. Uh, Francis, walking over there. Uh, my friend Pete. Um, and our witters, we actually had witters helping us. Carol Sullivan and Norma Bridwell, Kurt's witter, um, all helped us build this monument and put us together. You know, friends, could I get a, a round of applause for everybody who has helped us with this? You all have been awesome, really. Thank you so much. Our monuments generally take about 150 hours to build. This one took about 75 hours, man hours, total man hours. Uh, if we don't count the drive time, coming up here, and the time we did riding trains, and the time that we spent wandering around the property looking at everything, and the time visiting people here in Train Mountain who befriended us, and and, um, and of course, experiencing Beer 30 in the uh, back shop, there was a fair amount of time in there. Total materials cost was $1,120.46. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the cover. Brian, Charlie, would you guys come give me a hand with this? So if you guys would, if you guys would grab the cover, one on each side, I'll go ahead and release the... I could be a... Excellent, brother. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, go ahead and lower that thing down to the ground. Wow. Excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, so here's our monument. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll read you what the verbiage says. In 1870, S.A. Holmes planted the first production uh, grape vineyard in Madera County. In 1881, the vineyard was sold to Madera Vineyard Company, who built a large winery and distilling plant on the property with a capacity of 140 gallons. Uh, in 1896, Italian Swiss Colony bought the uh, vineyards and the plant. I gotta put my other glasses on, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm having trouble reading this. There we go. They brought in winemakers from Italy who were very experienced in the production of wine. By 1901, Italian Swiss became one of the largest producers of wines in America. During Prohibition, of course, all winemaking stopped. And what I didn't put on here is, at that point, they started making fruit juice concentrates uh, for use in you know, everything from popsicles to grape juice to whatever. Uh, in 1919, brothers Ken, uh, Ben and Cricker Arakalian bought the property and changed the name to Mission Bell Winery. When Prohibition ended in 1933, Mission Bell re-emerged to become a very successful producer of dessert wine, including Don Juan White Port, Don Mar Marco Toque and Mission Bell Port, all bottled by Madera Wineries and Distilleries, which was Mission Bell Winery. By 1940, over 5 million gallons of wine were made per year and shipped all over the country via tank cars like this one right here. Uh, the Petrie Wine Company purchased Mission Bell in 1949 and sold it to Allied Grape Growers in 1951. Petrie had established a cooperative known as United Vintners. In 1979, the company began producing Ingle Nook wines at the Madera facility. And they also did Charles Krug, if you've ever heard of Charles Krug. You hear about those, oh, those are Napa Valley wines. Yeah, right, made in Madera County. Dedicated on today, August 27th, 2022, by E. Clampus Vitus Chapters, Umpqua Joe, 1859, Yay. and Grub Gulch, 4149. So now we have to do the special thing. Christine. This bottle that I'm going to use um, is really kind of special. It was the last bottle that our noble grand humbug forever, Mike Robichaud, 
uh, drank out of before he passed on to the Golden Hills last April, last August. So this is Mike's special bottle. We only use it for this. So here we go. Easy, easy. There we are. This here monument is dedicated. Okay. Today, in memory of the ECB Grub Gulch 4149 brothers who have moved on to the Golden Hills, Jack Webb, Wild Bill Davidson, Yukon Dave Phillips, Mr. Johnson, and our honorary Noble Grand Humbug Forever, Mike Robichaux, we dedicate this monument to the Madeira wineries and distilleries. What say the brethren? Satisfactory! Satisfactory. Thank you all for coming. And so recorded. And please, if you would, uh, join us for a, a, a wee shot courtesy of our Scottish Laird, where did he go? Francis Sullivan and his witter, Carol. Fran, would you like to describe the sure. uh, today's selection? So I've kind of gotten interested in uh, the whiskeys that were drunk in, in the, uh, yeah. during the gold rush days <laughs> that came out from back east out here, the wagon trades and so forth. And so I started doing some research and uh, found out that most of the whiskeys that were made way in the early 1800s were pretty much uh, one little man operations and so forth. About in 18, I think it was 28, there was a company, Old Holverholt, and you've probably seen that bottle still today in the store. Uh, that was one of the ones that came out west that you would have found in a saloon in any one of the gold mining towns. Probably up here, uh, and the pioneers would have brought a bottle of whiskey, mainly because they never trusted the water. Because a lot of times water, especially if there was lumber mills, gold mines, uh, there was pollution, and so they did drank two things, beer and whiskey. So today, the other uh, one was Old Grandad. And you probably remember maybe every once in a while you'll find Old Grandad uh, in a liquor store. The other three, and they were considered the, the three kind of founders of American whiskey uh, that set the stage for the whiskeys that we know today. Well, today, uh, we're going to use Dr. James Crow's Old Crow Whiskey. He was a chemist from Scotland. And when he came in, uh, in I think it was, uh, he started this in 1835. But before that, he worked for another distillery. And he introduced science into uh, whiskey making. Before then, they had a technique trying to figure out how much alcohol was in it. They would swirl a glass, and it, to many, how many beads were on the uh, inside of the glass would kind of give them a general idea of how much alcohol. Well, he used a hydrometer and com would come up with an accurate amount of what the alcohol content was. So these three, Old Granddad, Old Crow, Old Overholt were really the whiskeys of choice. It's said that uh, Abraham Lincoln and my one of my favorite historical figures, uh, great general and president Ulysses S. Grant, favored Old Overholt. But if you do the research, he also liked this stuff too. <laughs> and of course, the story that you know that he was known to drink a lot of whiskey. So today we're going to kind of honor this by having everyone have a few fingers of Old Crow to celebrate this old tanker car. This old crow of a tanker car. This old crow. You all didn't know you were going to get a history of whiskey today, did you? Also, friends, we, you know, in, in the best of COVID practices, we used to all just drink out of the bottle, but we have our little solo cups. So please come on up and uh, I'll, I'll hold the first cup here and someone come up and get some. It's good.
I'm right behind you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Those what trained guys. Here you go, brother. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure this with me? It's actually right on the top, level 30, so there we go. It's beer 30. 30. Can you smell? No. Nope. No, thank you. <laughs> it's a mixture of, uh, basically, three <laughs> 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 